How's it going guys? I'm a bit late for the Kindred reveal, but however, I've had plenty of time to think about Kindred and how good she is. So I'm just going to talk about the few cards that were revealed not too long ago in some amount of detail while giving my general first impressions of Kindred. Uh, my first impressions of Kindred actually weren't, eh, I wasn't like too impressed, strictly because we're slaying the weakest enemy. However, she's a pretty good value engine and she does synergize very well with Undying decks, so there's going to be a lot more support for that kind of archetype. But in the end, I feel like she's going to support that archetype more than actually be a carry for the deck. But nonetheless, let's talk more in detail about it. So Kindred is a 5 mana 4-4 four four with Quick Attack, as you guys may have already seen. The first time you slay a unit, slay is a new keyword by the way, where if you strike an enemy, kill an enemy via combat or through other spells, basically killing an enemy then you will get the slay effect. Uh, so she will mark the weakest enemy and at the round end, kill units with my mark. So I think it's the first time you slay. So I'm not sure if Kindred needs to slay. I need some clarification on this, but I believe it is just, it, by the wording, it seems pretty confident that it is the first time Kindred slays an enemy. So to actually get that uh mark you essentially need to be slaying the enemies unfortunately so that kind of does turn down kindred's power level quite a bit but at this point you're going to want to be uh, mixing up kindred with uh keywords like vulnerable and challenger challenge is probably not going to be as popular within the shadow isles region so uh, vulnerability is going to be a big part of making kindred kind of flourish and see some of her potential which makes sense to fit her alongside a undying archetype because that also would strive under the keyword that is vulnerable. But if you actually manage to give units vulnerable, she does have quick attack, so it makes a lot of sense for helping to support her. Once you've seen, once I've seen you slay two units with my mark, so basically she needs to be on the field for her to flip, slay two enemies with mark, right? She flips, uh, nothing too exciting about the flipped version. She'll just start to get uh, permanent buffs onto herself after units are slain. So not too exciting for a level two. She's quite powerful enough at level one anyway. What's most relevant is the marking of the ability. Kindred Spirit Journey or Spirit Journey in general is a five mana fast speed spell that will kill unit then revive it similar to Chronicle of Ruin but in a spell which can also be targeted on enemies for cheap removal during certain key turns say your opponent's trying to flip a, a champion such as for example in the video they use Lucian but there's plenty more you can kill the unit and then it will revive uh, funnily enough if you use this on your opponent's Trinomia pre-flipped it's not going to be a good idea so don't go ahead and do that but uh, more, more than likely I see this being like anti-removal uh, for example, anti-obliterate, but most of the time it's probably going to like, I don't think it's a very fantastic card at all, but sometimes you'll find it from double kindred. I'm not sure if you actually main deck this unless we see some powerful last breath units revealed, which kind of want us to run more of this kind of effect. But in the end, I think just running Chronicle of Ruin will be enough. Going down the list here, we have a few more followers and spells to talk about. Our Lambs Respite is a two mana epic spell which we don't see too often. Give the weakest ally I can't take damage or die this round. This will only be good if realistically there is a very cheap unit that you don't want to die. So basically cheap units that you want to carry with, for example, Zoe is an example or even Teemo, but I don't think you're really gonna play Lamb's Respite to kind of help your cheaper units flourish unless they have a very powerful effect. I guess one of the more Worse examples is cards like Narsus who are quite powerful and start off with very low statted. Or another example is having a single carry on the field. However, I don't think Lamb's Respite is going to realistically see much main deck ability unless there is a very powerful combo that requires you to play Lamb's Respite. So I won't sleep on the card too much yet, but I don't see it finding much play on at least day one. Uh, Spirit Leech is a 4 mana 4 1 play, kill an ally to, do, to draw 2 cards. Seems like a staple for an undying archetype now. It is much better than Glooms Beyond in a lot of cases, providing you a body. It is obviously more expensive but cannot be interacted with, and card draw is really good. You might even play Glooms Beyond and Spirit Leech in the same list. However, it might be a little bit slow, uh, but we'll see some. I'm sure it'll see some experimentation. I think the, um, the Ether Fiend, the bird, is kind of very bad. 
I think you just play Vengeance in general. The only upside to this is strictly for Undying Archetypes because it has that kind of synergy. This can strictly be interacted with. It does provide some tempo though, so there's always that to think about. Like if there's a meta that allows you to play such a card like this instead of uh, Vengeance in general in your Undying deck, then you are going to be providing some tempo. Like if we can, I'll, like I, I make it sound worse at first, but I think Vengeance will find more homes than this card obviously will. So in general, the power level of this card is only strict to the power level of how good Undying realistically will be and whether or not you can actually fit this card in without getting punished too much. Now the Fading Icon is a 2 mana 3 1 that will summon the Prey. The Prey is a 0 mana 0 1. Card seems fine. Um, in term, it's, it's, it serves a similar purpose to House Spider, I will say, in a lot of matchups where you want to develop wide uh, chump blockers and then Fading Icon kind of achieves that. does have a slight amount of synergy with the uh, kind of like reviving and killing of units because you get more praise in the field. But realistically, this is a lower power level card that is strictly there to be kind of like a chump blocker. Uh, the Mask Mother, the 2 mana 2 2 kill an ally to grant me its stats. Uh, basically, it will only work very well with powerful uh, Undying or Last Breath effects. You probably probably won't be seeing this played in a majority of decks. Like most of the cards you'll see here today strictly feel like they're meant to be used in these like Last Breath effect decks. Minus Unto Dusk. Draw one for two mana burst speed, then Nightfall, activate an ally's Nightfall effect, ignoring your targeted portions. Uh, it's a reasonably good card. Um, I don't know if how many of these you want to slot into your Nightfall deck because there's, a, there's some other decent card draw options, but it does allow you to kind of escape strictly splashing Targon for Nightfall kind of decks. We're kind of close to having enough Nightfall cards that you might even consider going mono SI for like a Nocturne Nightfall deck if you want to do that, or splash other regions because you've got some pretty powerful card draw here uh, that would previously be used for Pale Cascade. But yeah, I think Unto Dusk is okay. I don't see it being too game-breaking, but it's going to be heavily considered for a lot of decks, specifically for Nightfall. I don't think you're going to play this as a two-mana draw one in many decks outside of Nightfall. Song of the Isles will be a two-mana burst speed spell granting an ally life, still fearsome and ephemeral. Uh, seems like a pretty good tech card, and we'll see generally some play in metas where possibly aggro is quite popular and that pretty much wraps up the reveal of the cards today i think uh kindred is one of those cards that will at first seem like she's very powerful uh as people are playing on dying decks and there's going to be a lot of people experimenting with it but i think kindred will eventually kind of just cease to be like i, I don't think she's going to be a super competitive meta deck but i do think undying is starting to be pushed up the tiers and I think Kindred is going to be heavily considered for that kind of archetype. As I said earlier in the video though, I don't see her being the sole carrier of the deck, just a decent supporting option or something you might consider using for it because there's quite a lot of powerful cards here to build a mono undying deck or consider even splashing Narsus, which might be better. But yeah, Kindred does seem pretty interesting, but she seems very limited in her deck building options. Anyway, what do you guys think? You let me know. Have a fantastic day and I will see you soon.